go. Two claps in Ric Flair. Woo! Let's get it. This is what the f we do, man. Let's this go. is what the f we do. It's our play. This is how we do it. Racket drops back, going for Gilliard, and that is caught. It's right near the goal line. Touchdown! One play, one pass, one score. Take your shot. If you get a PI, it doesn't matter. Let's get a shot. Let's get a pick. Second and eight, that's Hendrick. The ball is hit and intercepted. Tipped at the line of scrimmage, picked off by Baccio, who will take it in for the touchdown. Deep into their first season ever, the Massachusetts Pirates have been on the attack and flying the Jolly Roger all over the National Arena League. They pick up Brackett, he broke the plane, he's in the end zone for two, and this game is over! The Pirates win it! We've done a good job of, you know, finishing games, and, you know, most of the games that, uh, you know, we've had has been pretty close. So, no one can stop us but ourselves, and, you know, we have that mentality. I think we're on the we're on the right path, definitely. And we still got a lot to work on. We, we've made some mistakes across the way. I think we've let some games slip away that we should have had. So we're we're right where we need to be. We control our own destiny, and uh, we're we're definitely becoming better and better each week. One big reason for the team's success is their high octane offense, which has been firing on all cylinders since game one. Bracket back to work. Steps up, buys himself some time, looking for Brown. Touchdown, Massachusetts. We're the number one offense in the league right now, and. And it's not just because, for some reason, it's just our coach put us in great positions to make plays, and we have the playmakers to make the plays, and we have a great quarterback to put the ball where it needs to be. And we have a great O-line that help holds their block up. And the Massachusetts Pirates come from 15 points down to win it. So that, that's obviously the big picture. We want to we wanna be in the championship game. If, if we can't host it, be the number one seed, that's, that's definitely the goal as well. But we can't overlook anybody. We can't overlook a day, a practice, a meeting. We got to really just keep on grinding. To get to the championship, you can't think too far ahead. You have to take each day at a time, each game at a time. Obviously, the big goal is to the championship, but just focus on what we have going now and then move forward each week. The Massachusetts Pirates play in the National Arena League, the NAL, which is currently in its second season. And the Jacksonville Sharks are the inaugural National Arena League champions. There are six teams in the league. They range from Portland, Maine, all the way to Jacksonville, Florida. The regular season runs from April to the beginning of August, when the top four teams then go on to the playoffs. Most importantly, the National Arena League is a lot of fan-friendly fun. And you can always count on the games to deliver some hard-hitting, in-your-face action. Catch up, catch up. I'd say that fan will, will remember this game for yeah. a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Welcome to the league. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes the rush bracket underneath route. Sliding catch complete at the 11. Still on his speed as Gilliard to the goal line. Touchdown! Pirates wide receiver Marty Gilliard has been a big part of the team's high-powered offense this season. But his road to football success has been a long and challenging one. When I was a kid, all I looked up to was dope boys. Robbers, hustlers, swindlers. The guys that had the big chains, the gold teeth, the hundred dollar bills in their pocket. That's what I was brought up around. And so for me, I wanted the kids to know like, we watch football, yeah. But for us, ain't no way in hell a kid from Bonnell, Florida finna make it to the NFL. Boy, you got a better chance of selling dope. Fortunately, Marty chose to follow his football dreams and earn a scholarship at the University of Cincinnati. But then he ran into some academic problems, had his scholarship revoked, and was forced to learn some very hard life lessons. My mom, she told me, you know, the Lord will take away everything, all your pleasures in life, just so you can fall down on your knees and realize what life is really about. For me, the Lord had gave me a pedestal with football, and I squandered it. I didn't do right by it, so he took it away. Without a scholarship, Marty was evicted from campus and now owed the school for his freshman year. Without a place to stay, Marty wound up living in his car, working multiple jobs to survive. Remarkably, he also began to volunteer with the homeless and disadvantaged kids. So for me, it was like, I have this pedestal. It's really not that good. It's kind of like stumbling a little bit, but I could help. And so I just did that, you know, um, talk to my mom and she was just like, son, that's what you're supposed to do. 
you doing it, keep doing it. Something good gonna come out of this. I know it, I know it, I know it. I can feel it in my bones, watch. Marty's mom was right. He kept working and volunteering, kept his faith, and after repaying a big chunk of the money he owed, he was able to re-enroll at Cincinnati and get another shot at football. Mike going end zone for Gilliard. He caught it with one hand. Touchdowns! I wanted to show my teammates who I had came in with in 2005 that I was still that guy that was going to be a difference maker for us, you know. So that whole time, me being homeless, you know, sleeping in the car, from going from couch to couch, working all the jobs, you know, it was just like I noticed right then and there how much dog I really had in me. Marty had a fantastic career at the University of Cincinnati, earning All-American honors as a senior and finishing as the school's all-time leading receiver. He was drafted by the Rams and played for several teams in the NFL and CFL prior to his arena career. It was something that was bigger than life for me because I changed the culture where I'm from. For me, that was what it was for. It was for the kids to know that you can dream again. That's what I'm here for. I could die today. And no, I did my job. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it was like living a dream. It takes a lot of effort if you want to be a champion. And the Massachusetts Pirates, yeah, they're not afraid of hard work. Among the players hitting the gym today are defensive ends Kalen Burnett and J.D. Griggs, but they are more than workout partners and teammates. They're also roommates. What's going on, guys? I'm Kalen. This is J.D. That's our crib. Hey, come check us out a little bit. Come check our apartment out. Uh, check out, as you see, getting prepared for tonight's dinner. So you guys caught us at the right time. Come on in. Well, last year, um, we both played in Spokane and both played deep as in, played just alike. So then when we found out that he signed to come here, we already was close friends already. So when it came time to save roommates, it was no brainer. It's good because we kind of relate to each other off the field, but at the same time, like it's stuff that he sees on the field and we could talk about that under the same household. You know, this is my brother, you know? This is a little little bit of uh, my shoes. I got some shoes up here, got shoes uh, in here, I got shoes all over the place, so yeah. Uh, but the shoe I guy. Would, I would show y'all my no, yeah, shoes, yeah. but we're not gonna guy. go there. I, I'm not, we're not gonna do that. We, <laughs> He's the shoe guy. Enjoy, enjoy JD's room. We just do a little bit of, you know, put on, you know, a little wraps. Rap Simmons, little Vapor Max, you know, some light, you know, like, you know, Alexander Wangham or something, you know, nothing major. Money Mass Pirates, baby. <laughs> Both these guys have NFL experience. Kalen had three seasons with the Raiders and Titans. JD did training camp with the Jaguars. And while the arena game is definitely tough on defenders, they think that because of the toughness, it'll help them return to the game's highest level. It just really makes us better as defensive ends, you know, to just make sure that our get-off is on point, know where you're going, and get there immediately. Who doesn't want that? If we could get to the quarterback in this level, imagine what we could do with more time. Three-step drop, and it's intercepted! <laughs> Kalen Burnett jumped in front and picked it off! My, my dream is definitely to get back to the NFL, you know, finish what I started. Going from left side to right, they'll dump Ow. it off short to the fullback, and it's well read by John Griggs. All over it on the dump off to the fullback. My main goal for the future, for as far as football, uh, is to get back to the NFL. I mean, that's what I'm pushing for, doing practice, working out, do two workouts a day, and I'm really pushing for that. And that's my main ultimate goal. Yeah, we out, man. Man, y'all gotta go. get out. Beat it. Beat it. Catch y'all later. I got some chicken to cook for me, my lemon peppers, and y'all interrupting my nap time. Yeah, so man. I'll see y'all later, man. I Thanks practice. For coming, though. Come to the game or something. I'll see y'all later. Yeah. Go Pirates. 30 seconds left in the quarter. Oh, that's a pick six. It's going the other way. This is my first year ever in arena, so I didn't even know exactly what to expect, but I learned a lot instantly as soon as I got here. 
It's, it's a great experience. I'm just trying to make the best of it, and I think I'm enjoying myself, especially being on a good team and we're winning, and I'm trying to do the best I can to help contribute to that. Pirates defensive back Cheatham Norrells grew up and went to high school and college in Toledo, Ohio. After three standout years with the University of Toledo, he was primed for a great senior season until something unexpected happened. Basically, I had a unfamiliar pain that I, in my side that I was, wasn't was comfortable with after about a day or two. It never came down to diagnose. They just told me a viral infection and pneumonia. Um, I lost about 30 pounds. I was in a hospital bed for about 10 days straight. I wasn't able to walk or move. Almost wasn't even worried about football, I was just worried about living. Cheetah missed that entire season, but eventually he did recover. He emerged stronger than ever and returned the next year to have a great season. Then came his next challenge, playing professional football. Coming out, I didn't get drafted, didn't get signed right away, nothing. So it was just a free agent guy. I mean, it's a great opportunity, but I felt like I was better than that. Cheatham attended camps with the Steelers, Saints, and the CFL's Hamilton Tiger Cats without catching on. So he went back home and kept on working hard. That's when the Massachusetts Pirates called. I just love the opportunity to play. That was my biggest thing and turned into for me, like, you still had to make sure and let myself know, like, hey, you can still play this game. You still got opportunities to go on to the next level. And I think right here where I'm at, um, I'm taking advantage of that. And that ball is tipped and intercepted. It's picked up by Norrells at the two yard line. And hopefully within the next six to eight weeks as the season winds down, you know, he, you know, won't be coming back. You know, he'll be on an NFL or CFO roster and I truly believe that he is one of the guys that are gonna be at that next level. Cause I don't want to take it for granted. I still have goals to reach and I know I can play at that level. And there's a lot of great guys here that I've been going against, I'm practicing with, learning about, and I'm like, man, I can still do this. Like, I know I can, so. The Massachusetts Pirates' long march to the National Arena League playoffs continue with regular season game number 10 against their bitter rivals, the Columbus Lions. Game time, baby, game time. Here. Yeah. Outside, the home fans are having fun, enjoying the weather and warming up for the big game at the Pirates' free tailgate party. Inside the Pirates locker room, things are a lot more intense. Do your job, hold the man next to you accountable, and if he's down, pick him up and bring him along with you. Yes, sir. Yes, bring him yes, along sir. with you, because we're going to win this game, we're going to win this game outright. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Let's go. Pirates on three. One, two, three. Pirates! Pirates! Let's go, man. Let's go. Okay, good hit. Here we go! Good shot, D-Line! Let's go, Render! Two pass away play. Woo! Hey, play to the whistle now. Ground right, wing zoom, 50 stop, wing Coco on one one Looking his way is Brackett, looking for Brown. Makes the catch on the run to the goal line. He's in for a touchdown. <laughs> wants to throw to Purifoy, caught for a touchdown. And the back and forth game continues as now the Lions go back out front. Hey, we got a long game to play. Stay in it, focus. Obviously two, two very good teams, two very competitive teams, um, and we're fighting for playoff spots right now. So especially at home, we're not gonna let anyone come into DCU Center and try to, try to push us around. That's just not us as a whole team. So we came out there, we were aggressive. It's two times in a row! Let's go. Help! Tap! Not surprisingly, as the pressure rises, so do the tempers on the field. Yeah, these two teams do not like each other. Come on, get back to the huddle. We was kind of hostile on the side of the bench, um, but then, you know, our coaches kept us calm. It was like, you know, we got to keep an even kill. He always preached that, keep it even kill. You don't go, don't go too high, don't go too low. Stay even kill. And, and he kept preaching that. And then we had to gather ourselves, 
and was like, all right, we gotta, we're gonna come out with the win. Hey, don't worry about that, because we knew this was gonna happen. We didn't know it was gonna be to this extent, but it, right? We gotta keep playing through it. Massachusetts needs something to break the game open. With Columbus going for a long field goal, the Pirates get the big play they've been looking for. Pagante takes it about three yards deep in the end zone. He's up to the 10. Still going, 15, 20, 25. He crosses midfield, he's gonna go! That's a touchdown! That's a touchdown! That's a touchdown! I've never seen the arena so uh, energized. It, it just absolutely erupted. You could feel it. It's a big, big shift in momentum. Now, if you want to know what arena football is all about, the last two minutes of the first half is all you need to see. Because after the Pirates kick return TD, there's 32 seconds on the clock, plenty of time for another touchdown or two. Nice catch by Neal for a touchdown with 29.5 on the clock and time to celebrate. Let's go. Turn it up. Turn it up. Two cops to the right flip. White right, wing zoom, 50 bench, wing poker, one on one. And it was man coverage. So with dev speed, man, you could put anybody out there. And I'll, I'll take him versus pretty much anybody in the league, this league, NFL, CFL, you name it, man. I'll, I'll, I'm putting my money on dev. I dove down on that backside corner. I seen that. And then Sean threw it to the spot. He already threw it, and he already knew where I was going to be. I looked back at him. I seen the ball wasn't even in his hands. I was like, oh, the ball's in the air. Brackett looking his way. Deep caught. Touchdown. Just like that. Hey, Dave. Dave. Halftime in a tight game between two of the National Arena League's top teams, the Columbus Lions and the Pirates of Massachusetts. We got dogs, bro. We got dogs in this room, all right? So keep eating, bro. Keep eating, keep firing, keep flying around to the football. To play this game, man, you gotta be a beast, man. You can't just be out here being average. Either a beast or you're a Which one do you wanna be? We gotta step it up, man. And there is a toss. Fumble, picked up by Norrells, and Cheatham Norrells has a fumble recovery for a touchdown. It was a big play in the game, but I knew there were more plays to be left because there's, it's quick. Everything is quick. I learned that too. Um, people score, we score, they can come around and score two plays, one play. Neal going up hard, made the catch, pulled it down for a touchdown. So guess what? After that great start to the second half for the Pirates, momentum swings the other way, and suddenly this game is going in a completely different direction. Espinosa back to throw to the goal line. That is caught, and we are tied at 48 all. Let's get it back, baby. Tie it up. Let's get it back. It just, you know, when it rained, it poured. You know, it was just a tough situation. Um, you know, we preached, you know, certain aspects of the game that we needed to, to win games and taking care of the football was one of them. Ah! And it is intercepted at the one yard line. Picked off by Pickett and Pickett brings it all the way back to the 10 yard line. I'm going to take the blame on that because I shouldn't have gave you that call. I shouldn't have gave you that call. Just forget it happened. We're going to get another call. What was a 14-point Massachusetts Pirates lead is now a seven-point deficit with under two minutes to play. Not an ideal situation, but the Pirates are definitely not panicking. I got you, you got me. Here we go, I got you, you got me. Here we go, here we go, baby. Hey, we scoring right now. So as Sean gets in the huddle, uh, I hear Bones saying, we're we about to score this play, we're about to score this play. They're like, what touchdown celebration are you gonna do? I'm like, I'm looked at him like, man, we down. Well, what you mean with touchdown celebration? We gonna need to score first. He was like, we don't score, don't worry about that. And I was like, I thought to myself like, you right, you right. And I started smiling, I was like, go, tap! Pagante goes to the far side, it goes to Brown, caught, touchdown! Placement down, here comes the kick. 
And this one is good. We are tied at 55 with 51 seconds to play. Now comes the hard part. The Lions have the ball with less than a minute to play. The Pirates' defense, which has given up 55 points, must come up with a big play if they want to win this game. Let's go, D. Hey, one stop. One stop, baby. One stop, all we need. We huddled together in the defense and told them we got to take a chance. We got to take a chance. We got to be aggressive. We can't allow them to complete another football because they're going to wind the clock down. We only have one timeout. Hey, hey, take your shot. If you get a PI, it doesn't matter. Let's get a shot. Let's get a pick. It is Johnson in motion, and that ball is a lateral. It's loose. And we'll see if the Pirates get it. The Pirates have it. You get the ball back, that's that's arena football one-on-one. -on -one. You want to have the ball, ties game, whatever it is. If you have the ball last, you're in good shape. So once they made the stop, got the big turnover, we know we're in good shape, and we know we're going to go down there and score. The Pirates take it all the way down to the two with just 4.4 seconds left. So naturally, they're going to kick a field goal, right? Well, hell no. This is the Massachusetts Pirates. I'm with it. Let's get funky, man. Hey, let's do it. All right. Let's get funky. Let's get funky. Clump right, wing yo, timeout screen right. Get in the end zone. I want one. Go! Tap! Absolutely huge win for the Massachusetts Pirates and a textbook example of what makes the sport of arena football so much darn fun. Best of all, there's lots more to come. Let's go Pirates. Two, one. Pirates fans. Get up. Stand up. You messed up. <laughs> Let's make these scallywags walk the plane. <laughs> No, it's good. Yeah, I like how you stepped like out of real life. Hey, hey, he stepped out of real life. People brag some more. That's what he told me to do. <laughs> That's what he just told me to do. He told me to do. That's what he just told me to do.